G'day. Today we're going to go through an intro into 2D plotting in Octave um, to give you a good basis of understanding how to do some simple plotting and scatter graphs um, before moving into more advanced things including 3D in a future video. But let's just get straight into it. All right, you might think that you could do something like this and it's going to give you something nice. But it's ended up turning out an error. The reason for this is Octave tries to work with matrices, well, it does work with matrices. So in this instance, it's tried to calculate the value for Y based upon X, except there's no X defined. And as you can see here, our workspace is empty of variables. Now, there is a way to short circuit that, and that's you using the fplot function. Uh, we'll bring it straight up from here and into there. Now, before I run it, you'll see, so fplot inside the brackets, at, and in this case, we're using the x variable and then our function. Note this at must be here. It denotes a function. Um, and if you're using a variable, you need to put it in here as you're going to. So now, at, use the function of x is x squared. Um, and then we want a range of minus 10 to 10. Now, it would be a really short video if this was all I was going to show you today, uh, but it's not. Uh, and the reason I don't use fplot much is it's very simple, quick, which is good, uh, but it doesn't um, allow for some of the minor manipulations that you may need to do when you're doing more advanced stuff. So if you learn everything to start with, uh, and then you can wind it back later, or just run fplot if you want an indication of what your graph's going to look like. So let's get into it. So as I said, we need to define our matrices. So one of the simplest ways to do that is just to type out a list into a, a matrix like so. Now note, the computer's come back, the software has uh, come back and told us what X is equal to, noting it's here. Um, now, what it does is each time you put something in, it'll then calculate and then give you back your answers. In this case, X equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, for simple small matrices like this, it's not a problem. But if you're talking really long ones, such as this one, you're gonna run into problems. And as you can see, now if you've got the time to uh, let this scroll through for every single thing you do inside this software, then clearly you have more hours in the day and they're significantly smarter. Anyway, if you do yourself to, uh, if you do this to yourself, uh, the easy way to stop the scrolling, control C, and it'll stop it, but it still calculates uh, all your values. Now, what I recommend, and I put it on the end of pretty much everything I do inside Octave, is a semicolon. What the semicolon does is it suppresses the output. So it still runs a calculation, um, but it doesn't output it to the screen. Um, now, as I said, I recommend pretty much in everything I put a semicolon at the end of the line. The only times I won't is if I'm writing a script and I want that script to output stuff every now and again to reassure me that it's doing something. All right, moving on. So let's set up and let's make X and let's set it from minus 10 with an increment of one to 10, semicolon again. Now we've created for ourselves a one by 21 matrix. No, 21 values because it included minus 10. So minus 10, then 20 other values much the same as if you count zero to 10, there's 11 values. Now this might be fine. For a lot of stuff, it might be fine to do this, um, but that's not always the case. So if you want a number of values to plot, use the lin space function. So lin space, starting value, ending value, and how many data points you want inside that, enter. Now you'll notice we have a one by 100 matrix has been created for X and you can see it increments by this, it'll increment by the same value. Now, if you wanna have a look at the values inside your matrix, double click and then it'll open them up inside the variable editor and you'll see it's just over 0.2 is incremented each time, giving us a hundred values. All right, now let's get rid of that for the moment. To close out one of your variables, you hit the X here. Note, 
if you decide to enter edit a data point inside the X uh, variable here, if you've used it to calculate a Y, the Y won't automatically update. You need to rerun your calculation for Y with the new data points. So just be careful of that one. All right, so moving along. So we've now, let's, we've got our values for X from minus 10 to 10. Um, so let's calculate Y. Now, notice, if you type this, it's not gonna work. And the reason it's not gonna work is Octave wants to do matrix multiplication on it. And you can't multiply a one by 100 uh, matrix by itself. Um, if you haven't done matrix multiplication, don't worry about it. Uh, just know that you can't do that matrix multiplication like that. So what you need to do instead is a scalar mul multiplication. And to do that, put a dot before the square. What that does is it takes the first value of x squares it, second value squares it, third value squares it, and puts them into the y as it does that. So then, therefore, your first y value is the first x value squared, second y value is the second x value squared, so on all the way through. Um, and this, obviously, we now want to run. Now you can see we've got our y, um, our y matrix created here. Now, while we're talking about this, I'm going to I'm going to just, as an aside, point out why it's really important to get the number of data points that you put into this correct. So, if we were to plot our current function, so plot x comma y with 100 data points, we get this, which is not too bad. Um, it's nice and smooth. It's not generated too many data points, so it hasn't taken a long time. Uh, but it's given us something that looks pretty good. Uh, and that's what you want. But if you pick too many data points, what you'll find is the pro program will be slow and it'll take a lot of time to do your calculations and then plot. If you don't pick enough points, there are a couple other bits that can happen. So, for example, let's change our x from minus 10 going up by 5 to 10. Make our run our rerun our y, and then plot it, and we end up getting this, which is absolutely horrible. Now that gets more dangerous if you're using things such as sine, uh, sine and cosine. So to rerun a different x and y, and then plot it, if you pick the wrong values for your um, your X set in particular, you can end up with odd stuff like this. So this is saying from this graph, you've read it, um, Y equals sine X gives us always the value of one. Now don't get me wrong, that's because I picked the, uh, the exact data set that I wanted, but it's clearly not right. So you need to ensure you're very careful when it comes to picking your actual data sets for your X, so that you don't pick one too big but you don't pick one too small. You pick something that gives you the performance, but also the right sort of answer. Anyway, so going backwards, let's uh, recreate our X and Y. Now you notice what I'm doing inside here, and I'll explain this now. There's a couple of ways you can rerun equations or rerun things you've done. First one's in your command history window. Just come along, find whatever you want, double click on it, it'll then automatically rerun once you've uh, double clicked. Uh, or conversely, you can type, press up and down on your arrows. This will bring up the required stuff. Here we go, we've got our plot back. All right, so let's move on. We wanna make this look a, little, look a little bit nicer. So firstly, let's throw a title on it. To do that, it's very simple. Just type out title, the function title, and inside a, a string, which gives you whatever your title wants to be. In this case, y equals x squared. There we go, it's come up pretty simply. You can do more advanced stuff though with it. So for example, if you want your title to be over, like have multiple lines of stuff, you can do something like this. So what you do is you input a matrix into your title function. In this case, it's a three by one matrix, but any x, x by one matrix will work. Um, 
into the title and it'll come up. So there we go, we now have title over multiple lines. The other thing that we can do inside here is we can um, get it to bring up um, and use the text interpreter. So what that does, and this is how to do it. So once again, the string for title first, and then after that comma interpreter comma text. What that will do is it will use the text interpreter insert, in this case, the pi symbol. Um, what I recommend you do um, is when you get some time, look up octave and text, and it'll take you through a whole list of different special um, symbols that you can bring up and the commands for each of those. In this case, uh, backslash pi brings up pi. Um, and you can add a little bit more to your bits. Now notice, um, when we look at our plot, one of the things you'll notice straight off the bat is that the origin, like the y-axis doesn't go through our origin. You can add grid lines uh, to make it a bit more clearer, uh, but this is not what we're used to. We're used to um, having your y-axis run through your origin. So this, some of you will probably set you on edge. To set this in the location that you're used to, you use the following command. It's a set command. Uh, GCA is the last figure that we've done. And basically it sets the y-axis location to the origin. And now you'll notice it looks like this. Uh, let's now throw some labels on there. So Y label. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be really boring and just go Y label is Y. Uh, X label is X. And Bob Gerard, you now have the X and Y's put on there. All right. What I'll do now, I'm actually going to finish there at the moment. Um, but if you have any questions or if there's any other bits that you want to see in any of the parts in Octave, throw a uh, comment down the bottom or send us an email uh, and I'll get right onto that in the future. But for now, thanks for watching.